Hi, folks. As I went out for to take a little walk I ran into that wild Bill Jones He was walking and I talking by my true lover's side And I begged him for to leave her alone He said my age is Too old for to be controlled I put my revolver from off of my side And destroyed that poor boy's soul scrambled as he fell to the ground and he gave a dying moan I turned to my true lover standing around said now honey you will be left alone so pull out all of your long necked bottles and we'll all go on a spree Today was the end of the Wild Bill Jones And tomorrow be the death of me There's nothing like a murder ballad. Wild Bill Jones, who only appears for a minute in the narrative. Well, it's show 56. Mm -mm. Seems like a lot of shows to me. Lucille Ball probably did a thousand. Wonder if she did more. Probably more. Long time, long, 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 long time. I've got a couple of um, spirituals for you today. Ah, the first one is Pearly Gates, recorded by Blind Willie McTell in 1949. And uh, wasn't put out for 20 years. Uh, I had heard that he did another one 20 years before that, 1929. But I haven't heard that one. Or if I have, I don't remember it. But I certainly... Pearly Gates. Unfold of the 
short life will soon be over and my vision will be told all my songs will sound much sweeter when the pearly gates unfold More friends in glory than those earthly plan can hold. I'll be no longer friendless when the pearly gates unfold. short life will soon be over and my vision will be told all my songs will sound much sweeter when the pearly gates on I just started singing that song recently, and uh, it's a lovely tune. Looked up the lyrics on the internet, all different words. I'm going to do a couple of kinks songs. One I did before. It's just fun. Well, they're both fun for me. We make them fun for you. Well, I know, and I know, I know that I have a bonnet. Know that everybody be happy, happy as you and me. Oh, I know, oh, I know. Come on, baby, let me tell you all of the things I want to say. Come on, baby, let me tell you all of the things I want to say. Everybody's going to be happy. Which means you and me, my love Everybody's gonna be happy Which means you and me, my love And I know, I know I see you walking down the street It makes me happy to see you walking It makes my life complete I know things I want to say. Come on, baby, let me tell ya all of the things I want to say. Everybody's got to be happy, which means you and me, my love. Everybody's got to be happy, which means you and me, my love. Everybody's got to be happy, which means you and me, my love. Oh gosh, 
I think it was the other side of all day and all of the night. Um, either that or the other side of Ya Really Got Me. It was one of those early ones, though. They, um, they were a good band for singles. The other side was always good. Some bands were not reliable in that sense at all. You go to the other side and it's like, what? Anyway, I need you. <laughs> I need you I need you more than birds need the sky I need you It's true little girl That you can lift a tear from my eye And if you ever tell me goodbye I'll break down and you'll hear me cry I need you more than anybody else has needed anyone before I need you There's no one else to stand in your place I need you It's your little girl And you can bring a smile to my face And if you ever tell me Break down and you hear me cry. I need you more than anybody else has needed and it won't be for. I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you. Um. No use doing the instrumental and coming back. You, you need a far. You need a real guitar solo. Dave Davies did a great job. I suggest you listen to it. He was truly unique, wonderful. He had unique harmonies, unique voice. I believe there's a new album of his greatest hits. I can't remember what it's called. All his singles. But how about Mindless Child of Motherhood, which was the other side of Lola? Gosh. Yeah, he did great songs, uh, aside from great solos. Hi. Well, you don't usually see me walking around with the microphone, but now I am. I'm walking around with the microphone. Yes, and I'm going to show you what you've never seen, basically, which is where we are. Um, we'll give you some idea. We're not going to go from office to office, but, well, for instance, if I go forward, then we switch to the other camera, and we see me here going towards the studio, and waving to Rebecca, looks up, smiles, there's, all right, there she is, see that? She's behind her excellent, gigantic monitors, displays, mixers, everything. As you can see, the wall is blue. Oddly enough, it's not the deep blue that I'm seeing on screen, but these are the terrific cameras, and isn't that something? That's, see, it's a, it's a real place. And that's, that's what I look at when I'm not staring at the camera and trying to think about you, my wonderful viewers. And now I'll go back to the other one. We'll just travel around here. Ah, you see my guitar? I have a guitar down here. See, it's waiting for, well, it's, it's waiting for me to put it away, really, at this point. But, um, gosh, it's an interesting room. I've been in here a lot of times. There's a window behind this curtain. Oddly enough, there's actually a window. Yes, there is a window. Boy, you can really see a lot. You can see all the way down here. If I crawl on the floor. No, 
I don't have to crawl on the floor. Now, maybe if we were, had some loud music, I could get crazy, but I don't really, I can't really see getting crazy. It's nice being able to go in circles, though, without getting away from the microphone. Isn't that terrific? Wow, and then here's the curtain. Did you ever see the cabinet of Dr. Caligari with Caesar slinking around? I love that. He's slinking around. You know, the sets, if you haven't seen it, uh, you really should see the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, one of the earliest German expressionist films, one of the earliest horror movies. It's been real nice doing all these shows for you. Well, what's that on your night table? Ah, just kidding. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Imagine this. Look at this. Great. Now I'm in the absolute corner. I'm invisible. There's no one. There's no one on stage. No one on stage. And now he, there he is. He's on stage. He's coming. He's coming too close. Make him go away. Make him stop. OK. Well, anyway, I wish I had some fancy clog dancing I could do. I saw Buckminster Fuller clog dance when he was in his 80s. Incredible. Yes, he came up and did some songs with my band, the Unholy Modal Rounders, back in 1976. It was a heck of an experience. It was nice. I have a recording of it. He was nice enough to make records of the recording and give one of them to each of us. It was awfully nice of him. And uh, some Buckminster Fuller fan, or should I say collector, who knows? Maybe they'll pay a fortune for it someday. Or maybe it'll just be one more thing sitting in the back room of some relative's house, and they'll be saying, I don't know, what he, he collected all this stuff. I don't know what to do with it. Yes, it's very interesting to think of what will happen to your stuff when you die, especially when you're a collector. I am a collector. I collect some art books. I collect some comics. I collect some records, old records. I have records I bought when I was 10 and 11. Ah, yes, I, I would have more comics if my mother didn't throw them out. And I would have more books if I hadn't given so many away. I'm sort of a collector, but any real collector would just think my collections are piffle. You know, they're nothing major. And they're right. It's all relative. But uh, I do try and keep it in good shape. Got a lot of stuff from, uh, is it B.C. Cole? The guy who makes uh, archival envelopes for comic books and magazines, and a piece of cardboard that you put in with it, it actually sucks the acid out of paper, out of pulp paper. It's got two. It's got two layers of cardboard with a layer of charcoal in between them, and so you put them with your comics when you put them away, and it helps them stay, or get better, maybe. Uh, you don't want them to have too much sunlight and air, of course. But paper really lasts a long time. Longer than microfilm. Very interesting. OK, folks, now. Now for Run On. Run On for a long time. From Bill Lanford and the Lanford Heirs, who recorded it in 1943. And uh, Moby sampled it on his album, Play. And that's where most people know f it from. But there are many versions, and it's a very old song. Run on. OK. We give a little We Will Rock You. You must run on for a long time. Run on, ducking and dodging. Run on, children, for a long time. Let me tell you, go to money, gonna cut you down. You might run on for a long time. 
Run on, talking and dodging. Run on, children, for a long time. Let me tell you, God Almighty, gonna cut you down. Great God Almighty, let me tell the news. My head got away in midnight, do. Great God, I've been down on bended knee, talking to the man from Galilee. My car spoke, and it sounds so sweet. I thought I heard the shuffle of angels' feet. He put one hand upon my head. Great God Almighty, let me tell you. But he said, go till that long torn alarm Go till that midnight rider I tell the gamble and a ramble and backbiter Tell him God Almighty gonna cut him down You might have run on for a long time Run on, ducking and dodging Run on, children, for a long time Let me tell you, God Almighty gonna cut you down You might run on for a long time, run on, talking and dodging, run on, children, for a long time, let me tell you, God Almighty gonna cut you down, some people go to church just like signifying, trying to make a date with their neighbor's wife, brother, let me tell you, just as sure as you're born, you better leave that woman alone, because of one of these days, you mark Word. You think that brother has gone to work. You go up and you knock on his door. That's all, brother. You will not no more. You might run on for a long time. Run on, ducking and dodging. I run on, children, for a long time. Let me tell you, God Almighty, gonna cut you down. You might run on for a long time. Run on. Talking and dodging, I run on children for a long time. Let me tell you, go to mighty, gonna cut you down. Ah, and along with the studio shots, I wanted to show you this. Look at this, folks. We've, I've now got the cameras standing almost where I stand. And you see that monitor, which now has endless repetitions of the camera looking at the monitor, looking at the camera, looking at the monitor. That's where I see myself while I'm playing. And then there's the time display, and there's a ladder. Very convenient when the lights are way up near the ceiling. Yes, that's it. You see this? That's what I get to look at. This is my inspiration. The only thing I have that you don't see is this camera, which is right under or slightly blocking this gigantic monitor, which is part of the wonderful new gear that they got here. It's just great. Now that is one heck of a shot, I just have to say. That is one heck of a shot. And now I can't really see what you're seeing, but I do know in a way because I just set up the camera. And so I should be somewhere in the shot. Isn't this marvelous deconstruction of the mystery of the TV studio? Yes, it's gear and staff and lots of wires and cables. Okay, I guess we should call them cables. If they're messy enough, the uh, informal term is spaghetti. But at any rate, it's been wonderful seeing you, and I hope you've enjoyed the show. We're gonna end, I'm gonna end, by splicing in this song that um, Well, it could really use a lot of noisy guitars and drums, but since I can't do that, it just has to be, uh, it's like showing a car that's up on blocks. I don't care about 
about that girl. Oh, I don't care. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much for coming to my show, <laughs> for not turning off my show, for staying on this channel, for being the kind of thoughtful people you are. Keep on thinking. <laughs>